So we return to Arena, where we are beginning the game. The previous video I made was pretty much just background about the game, learning about the game, making a character, which I do very much consider to be the game. That questionnaire is awesome. But at least, at last now, we can get in and actually start punching some things. So we capped off last time with the intro cutscene, which I kind of muted just to stop information overload. Let's now enjoy that and meet Rhea Silmain. Do not fear, for it is I. We are still named. Listen to me. There are no others left to carry on this fight. You have been left in this cell to die. Jagarthar, Imperial Battle, Mage of Tamriel, has taken on the guise of the true Emperor. He does not see you as a threat, being only a minor part of the Imperial Court. In that act of arrogance, he has made his first mistake. Look to the north wall of the cell. You will find a ruby key which will unlock the door. Take it and make your escape. The passages here were once used by Tharn to hide treasures he had stolen from the Emperor's coffin. If you wish, you can gather enough to support yourself away from the Imperial seat. Be careful. There are many creatures which inhabit the sewers now. Vile rats and goblins. It is too late for me, for I am already dead. Only my powers as a sorceress keep me between this life and the next. That power, however, is waning. Do not succumb to greed or you may find these tunnels to be your final resting place as well. I can still work my magic to a certain extent. If you travel west from this cell, then south, you will find a shift gate. It will transport you far enough from the center of the Empire that you should be safe. If you survive these sewers, you will see me again. Remember, Tharn has taken on the guise of the Emperor. No one will gainsay his word for yours. I will come to you again in your dreams, so it is imperative that you rest from time to time. In that way, I will be able to communicate with you and lend my aid. You are entering a dangerous arena, my friend. One in which the players are beings beyond your mortal comprehension. I do not envy your role. There is, however, a power within you as yet untapped. Look for me when you have gained experience in the world. You are my last and best hope. All right, I get it. I totally heard it. It's Jagar Tharn. There was definitely a little bit of a hard J there. So the antagonist is Jagar Tharn, not with a soft J. I guess I'll nip that in the bud now. So, yes, that's Rhea Silmain. She'll be speaking to us a ton. Did you notice they seem to do a bit of a Star Wars thing at the end of that message? She goes on and on and on in that introduction. But basically, she's recapping what you could already know if you had read the short story from the manual or really even just been paying attention in the initial two cutscenes when you boot the game and when you actually start creating a character. So, anyway, yes, her goal for now is to just get us out of this dungeon. She does describe us really as one of the leaders of the Imperial Guard, and now we're just cast down. We're going to be looked upon like some nobody, and we just need to get out. I have to say, this prison is truly terrifying. You awaken to the drip of water from somewhere above. The cell walls are covered in slime, as are the chains which hang from above. Your eye, however, immediately goes to a strange ruby glint from the corner of your cell. So as we play, we get these little orange messages. Sometimes they scroll off really quickly. And I'll have to do something funky, like pause the game or something, or pause the editing so that I can read them for you. But they tend to get pretty interesting and nice flavor text. A lot of the game is about building your own adventure and doing your own thing and not in the main story, where you don't really get so many of these messages. But as the main story goes along, this is like a lot of like the setting building and kind of that D&D &D immersive kind of uh, text-based quantities that you're kind of going to be looking for. So yeah, we are in this terrifying cell and I swear to God, I don't know whether it's just because because the controls for this game are so painful and slow and difficult. But I've spent a long time in this cell before, honestly. Uh, just roaming around trying to figure out what the hell to do and because I spent so long in the cell I felt really really isolated and far away from the rest of the world You're gonna see that we are actually at the bottom of a pretty significant dungeon too uh, Now it's no secret probably But the first bit of trivia I have for you is that most Elder Scrolls games do start you as a prisoner What's kind of cool though to experience right now for arena is knowing that they're not making you a prisoner right now Just because they're following some format, right? 
they're making you a prisoner because they wanted to start you as a prisoner. This is really the game as they wanted it to be. So it's kind of nice and they do really throw you into the fire. For a lot of purposes, I've died so many times in this dungeon more than later in the game. Arena, like a lot of RPGs, is one of those games where as you learn more about it and if you build right, it gets kind of easier as it goes along. But this first dungeon can be brutal and I'll explain why. Just another reason why I end up feeling so freaking isolated. So, well, what do we do? If we just try to interact with the gate, it says the lock has nothing to fear from you, but we can't really open it. Now, we do have a pickpocket interaction or a lock picking, but I don't think we can do that just now. This is just for pilfering. That might just be for... Um, uh, stealing from other people But uh, we can't do that Remember we are a ranger not a thief And besides the idea here is that that ruby glint In the corner of the room Well it's a key It doesn't look like a ruby key It looks like a gold key or a brass key to me But there it is It's on some kind of a, a raised platform Which I don't know is that meant to be our bed I'm not exactly too sure But all we have to do is pick it up and it says we found a ruby key and we get to move on uh, by now interacting with the door. You'll notice on the top left of the UI, a keys appear there now. And oh look, it looks ruby. So maybe that's why it's the ruby key. And like the short story said, we're kind of happy that it's a sturdy door. It's kept the monsters out. But now we open the door and the monsters are allowed in. So let's talk a bit about fighting. Now there is this cross sword icon, which I can click to raise my weapon, which right now I don't have anything equipped. I just have my fists, uh, which do one to two damage. That's it. Um, I can also bind that. I have that bound to my F key, which is kind of how I play most of these games, either F or R. So we raise these. Now the way that we play the game is everything really is on the mouse. It's super clunky. Like, if I want to look left, I need to move my crosshair to the left, click, and it will scroll to the left. I'm not joking. If I want to move forward, I'm supposed to mouse up and then move forward. If I want to do this, like so. There's also the arrow keys are binds. There's binds all over the left of the keyboard, and it wants me to use the mouse to do all kinds of things, like pick up that key. So, I don't have three hands. I'm a human being. Uh, I can't use the arrow keys on the right of the keyboard, the other stuff on the left, and the mouse. So, one of the things I've actually done with Arena for this playthrough is I've remapped it. Well, the door closed again, but it's still not locked. Uh, I've remapped a lot of stuff. So, I'm trying to emulate kind of standard WS and D controls, which means I won't have to do this too much. But the reason I mention it is that as you're trying to interact and fight, if you do mouse in the wrong place, you're going to start turning. And uh, it's, it's not very tolerant, right? There's actually not much window before all of a sudden you start turning. The, the nearer you, to the middle you click, the slower you, you move, and then the further. It's kind of crazy. Not only that, then we have attacking. So attacking is kind of based on where I move my mouse. I have to be honest, it reminds me of an old Harry Potter game <laughs> uh, where you would do these lovely swish and flicks on the screen to cast various spells. Well, Arena's a bit like that, okay? Depending in which direction we, we swing, and we move the cursor, we actually do a different kind of strike. So if I go left and right, we do these kinds of jabs. If I go up and down, the jabs do change. Now, maybe, maybe for unarmed, <laughs> that's not necessarily true. But if you do a diagonal slash, it's different. If you do horizontal, it's different. If you do up and down, it's different. And they all have different hit chances damage chances and so on. Basically, some strikes do more damage but are more likely to miss. Some strikes do less damage but are more likely to hit, right? The kind of most damage you can do, uh, that's the only one I'll describe for you now, is a vertical chop. So we like pull the mouse down. It's this. So if you're going up and down, but you're also less likely to hit. Now, if you watch the previous episode, uh, you'll remember that I actually stacked my hit chance up so I can do this and I should be able to do better. All right, so there you go. That's how we fight. And let's see what we got. So corridors here seem twisted and confusing, but Rear's instructions were to go west, then south, to find the shift gate. And uh, the shift gate is basically just our exit. I don't know if the later games talk about the idea of shift gates, but that's the exit to this dungeon. It's not the exit to all dungeons. Basically, the exit to this dungeon is going to teleport us. And, oh god, okay, so there's a goblin. Now, these are the somewhat scarier mobs. Alright, so we can punch him to death and he dies. Now, you can loot anyone you kill by just clicking the body. It hit there, it said he had nothing usable, so we don't have to worry. Um, and, well, we've demonstrated a kill. You can see on the bottom left, I have health. That's the green uh, bar. So, as you're watching, really, it's the green bar that I'm going to be paying a ton of attention to. Okay, we're being attacked again. 
and it's the green bar that you probably want to be paying attention to to know if I'm doing well. The tricky thing about this game is, like you just saw, mobs attack you from behind all the time. And if you're not really paying attention and seeing yourself getting attacked, uh, you can just get all your health drained, especially if you're going out of your depth. It's super, it's super dangerous. There are some visual cues that you're being hit, like the screen will roll a bit and it will flash a bit. There's actually an option if you hit one of the F keys to like cull that stuff away, but I can't imagine doing that because you're just going to get yourself killed in all these ambushes. So you'll see I'm only just like two seconds into the dungeon and I've taken a lot of damage. Pretty scary. Um, so why am I lingering right near the door? It's because I just wanted to find space to talk about this. It's a loot pile. Lots of different loot piles in the game that will give you different things. And here, what do we have? Well, 66 gold, which is nice. Gold is really important in Arena. There's about 100 different things that you'll want to buy as you go through, no matter what kind of character you are. Well, unless you're a thief. If you're a thief, you can just... You're, you're rich, but you're kind of weak, right? That's essentially the thing of being a thief. Um, so you, you do want to always get that gold. Uh, and then what else we got? Well, we got a Warhammer and we got a Plate Helm. Now, as a Ranger, I can use any weapon. And I do want to show you, like, loads of them. But oh, I wanted to close the door, but I think we just need to move away from it and then it closes on its own, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, before we get to the main weapon I want to use, I'll, I'll show you some other stuff. So Warhammer, sure, why not? How do we equip things? Well, over here we have our character's face. Lovely. Uh, and if we click him... We get to go to our stats panel. This is pretty much what you saw on character creation. Nothing too interesting there, except you'll notice here that the experience is now going up. Also, by the way, your gold was randomized at the start of the game too. Uh, I don't know how, whether I had a lot or a little. This is one of those things that speedrunners want a good amount. Uh, but if we click to next page, and you'll, you'll realize that's quite hidden, I think, personally. Click the character, then go to next page. You finally get to the equipment screen. And, well, what have we got? Well, uh, a few pieces of gear. We have a broadsword, which we actually started the game with. You'll remember that in the manual, it said we started with a dagger. Well, no, actually, we've started with a broadsword. Um, and I think if we right-click, yeah, you can see that the broadsword does 1 to 12 damage. Our fist did 1 to 2. This thing does 1 to 12. Really nice. Okay, it's also in a new condition. Stuff does have to be repaired. Uh, or we have the new Warhammer, which we just got, which is even more damage. It's 3 to 18. But it's pretty heavy. So I'm going to use the Warhammer. And then there's a Plate Helm, which is armor. And you'll notice that this armor is actually blue as well, which means it's got some magical property. Or it's... Uh, I'm pretty sure that means it's got some magical property. Sometimes, And magical properties can mean either like passive buffs or things you can directly activate. And I'm just going to double click this to equip this. Now, there's a ton of numbers around my character. I'm not going to explain those just yet because... We really want to get out of adventuring. Uh, but those are another weird, confusing element of the game. Okay, so we're a little bit more defended because we've got a helmet. I keep trying to close the doors. Got to get used to not doing that. And well, we have the hammer. The hammer looks really subtle down there. But now as we swing, you can probably see... The yeah, look, look, See if I jab it? That's actually jabbing the hammer into someone's face. This is swinging it. And then there's diagonal swings. So there you go. You can see the animations are a good big different. All right. Uh, the red bar as well is our fatigue. Uh, which we don't necessarily want to be drained on and you're gonna find that there's a lot of water in the dungeon Which will do such a thing now just to be uh, Totally clear to you all getting out of this dungeon is not actually that bad as scary as I've said it was So here's some water. I'm not gonna drop in there yet. You're actually kind of vulnerable in the water I'll talk about that more in a second. It's not that bad if you really do just do go directly west You'll see we have a compass at the top of the screen and then south, if you're ever given an option, and then west, if you're ever given an option, you'll find the end, like, really quickly. You can make a big beeline. Um, and I do intend to do that. But also, uh, I kind of want to explore more. It seems safe to rest in these niches. You think that the rats or other creatures may not smell you with the draft that runs so close to the floor. So, there are more of these raised platforms. We can maybe believe that the conceit of the original one was that it was a bed. But you're going to realize very quickly that Arena is... So we got a goblin. Okay, and we can one-shot goblins now. That's very good. You're going to quickly realize that Arena is full. There we go. We get 27 gold of platforms like this. And the reason that they're here is to allow you to regain your health. You'll see, as I get up, as I climb, it did actually cost me a bit of fatigue a second ago. Maybe only the once it will do that. But uh, that was totally a thing. So, uh, we will utilize those when we feel like we get a little bit low on health. So, here's a rat. Uh, rats are way squishier than the goblins. And mostly the whole dungeon is just full of rats and goblins. 
But rats are actually way scarier. Two reasons. One, they're quiet little buggers. And they can be draining you without you really realizing. Like that one there. Okay, and I'm getting kind of low. All right, we got a level. The other problem with rats is they can disease you. I'll come back to that in a second. So anyway, we got level. Um, right, so the level up screen. It's basically like the character creator screen. And I feel like, you know how the previous video was really long? I probably should have just <laughs> explained all of it here when we got a random level up at some point. The thing is, remember how we could roll up to like 19 bonus points uh, at character creation? On level up, it's the same thing again, but way less points, all right? That's why in the previous episode I said that re-rolling to get a good opener is kind of like leveling up a lot. You can get anywhere from one to six bonus points every level, and that is just pure RNG. That's it. There's just nothing else to it, just were you lucky or were you not. Um, so here you can see I actually got five points, which is really excellent, and I can spend those. At the same time, I think a lot of our other stats did get some random uh, stuff going on in them as well. Like, we rolled a dice to bump our health, and then we got an extra amount according to our stats. So we're now up to 55 health instead of just 40. Overall, I'm really happy with my random numbers and stuff at the moment. I think we're doing perfectly well. Um, but you do want to be careful. Save scumming is, you know, the technique of save your game, hit a random thing. If it doesn't go well, just reload and do it again over and over and over and over, right? Uh, it's kind of looked down on by me. I don't really like save scumming that much. And I try to avoid it in games as much as possible. But Arena is actually really punishing. If you just get unlucky and you roll, like, one bonus points, like, five levels in a, in a row, there is an immense, gargantuan difference between you and someone who got lucky. So, I will probably do a little bit of, just before I level, save, see if it's alright, and then go again. I won't do anything crazy, but we might do that. It won't appear in the videos, but, you know, I'll try and cut all that boring stuff out. But I will try not to fall really far behind. Because one thing about Arena is, as you level, the game does get a little bit harder. And if you've been getting all these crappy little pittances of levels, it's not very good. There's actually a really compelling idea to me of a challenge run, where you have minimum attribute increases every level and see whether, how easy it is to beat the game. There's some other mechanics we'd, which you'd have to, have to avoid in that, but we'll explain those later. Anyway, so what do I want to go for? Well, again, five points would allow me to bump my endurance to go to plus three health, which I'm actually kind of happy with. I think that would be pretty nice. And then maybe we can start looking at strength again, or we can do those uh, little points in luck that we were thinking about. Um, we do have to catch up our willpower a little bit eventually. But yeah, I'm just going to go all five into this. Because getting a plus... Oh, I'm not at plus three. That's a shame. Hmm. Maybe I'll just do like uh, two points there. What if I just do one in endurance and four in strength? Does that give me my damage plus one? Ah, it does. All right, let's go to that then. Let's get damage plus one. Hit plus two. And we're still stacking endurance quite well. That's, that's a nice level up right there. Okay, so, good. I'm pretty happy with all that. Now, I'm really scared of more rats. You'll notice the spawning is a little bit random, so I'm going to come up onto this alcove. And uh, what we will do is rest and save. So, first of those, I want to rest. I'm going to hit the R key for that, but you can also hit the campfire here. It's telling me that I can't rest because there's enemies nearby, which is not fun. Okay, and we're kind of low on health, so I'll save first. Hit escape to bring up this menu. You've got sound, music, and then there's a detail slider. I'm actually going to crank this up. The difference in this slider is super minor, especially in the start of dungeon. <laughs> but I will do it there for some of the later stuff. Obviously, even running in DOSBox and emulating old stuff. PCs are more than capable of all of this, right? Uh, and then we just, we can go new game, which will just throw us the menu, load, save, or drop to DOS. Uh, so yeah, let's save, and I guess I will delete this. So, Tarlin and Sewers, and we have saved our game. Brilliant. And now we're back in, and I'm a little bit more confident maybe going out. I am going to try to not die for as long as possible. As always, anyone who watches any of my series, I like to keep that tension there. But I don't know whether it will really be possible. The skittering of many tiny clawed feet can be heard on the wet brown stones. Some of these... Uh, by the way, those messages don't actually necessarily mean an enemy is near. They just... They're just flavor, really. That's all. Didn't I already come down here? No, no, no. This was a different area. Like, it just came up again. But that doesn't actually mean there was a rat near me. Let's try this alcove. Maybe we can rest here. This is a deeper one. Pretty nice. Oh, never mind. There's a goblin right here. Okay. So, that was actually amazing. Very rarely 
you can be attacked in an alcove, uh, even though they're supposed to be safe places. And you actually just saw it happen there. I think it's more of a thing in the starter dungeon than anywhere else. It is rare. But, um, damn, man. They said I see a goblin as well. I'm getting really unlucky. Usually you're okay, to be honest. Yeah, I know it seems safe to rest, but it's blatantly not safe, is it? Okay, there's a gold pile, but where was the freaking thing that was trying to kill me or stop me resting in that alcove before? Not too sure. Okay, so gold pile looks really fancy, doesn't it? Uh, it's not that fancy. You see them all over the game. I mean, you are always encouraged to pick them up. I will compliment Arena on being really good for, like, loot, at least because money is just worth so much. So I'm going to pick up the money and uh, let's just try again, I guess. Nope, it's just not working. Sometimes you'll see that, obviously, as I move, enemies are moving around too. And they might just wander away. Also, that heartbeat sound doesn't necessarily mean you're in combat or doesn't necessarily... Uh, there we go. Maybe you were the guy stopping me from resting. Um, it's just like a scary sound. Okay, so we get a dagger, which we'll pick up. There is a carry capacity in the game. You can't carry too much. Oh my god, seriously? I just don't like being so low on health. Even if we can one-shot them, all they got to do is like sneak up on us and we won't be in a good position anymore. Red eyes seem to glitter us from the darkness. Um, so yeah, we'll see. All right, now there's water. Let's talk about the water a little bit. You don't really want to be in water. When we drop in water, we take a fatigue hit. Oh my god. And the shaking thought made me think I was being attacked there. We're not actually being attacked. You can swim and there are tunnels and there are places to go. So it really opens the dungeon up. Sometimes in a lot of these dungeons, all of them are handcrafted. Uh, so the devs put really, really fun, like interesting hidden little things around. And just to be clear, everything in the main story is main crafted. The, the, the random stuff is away from the main story. So this is all exactly as they want it to be as far as a dungeon layout. Um, but the thing with the water is, while I'm in there, I can't attack. And enemies who are up on the ledges nearby can attack. So they have the high ground, basically. And they're gonna be able to really mess me up. Not only can they attack me, but if, if I was in the water and a goblin was standing where I currently am, then I'm gonna get blocked by him. I'm not gonna be able to climb out and he's just gonna keep hitting me. Like, I'll just struggle against him. So it's really dangerous to be in there. So you can just swim through, right? You can just drop down, go out the other side. But there is a jump button in the game. Like so. You can either jump in position with the J key. Or you can do shift J. Yeah, I know. The binds are crazy. If you do shift J, you jump forwards. Now, I've rebound shift J to space. Like a sane human being. And I just messed the jump up anyway. So, quite often, you do just want to jump these. The acrobat class and the speed attribute. They actually improve your jump distance. So kind of a fun thing. I'm not sure whether if you bump them up enough, it's better to bunny hop everywhere. I like the idea that it is because I love jumping in games. <laughs> okay, another two rats. I'm, I'm seriously really low. Please let me rest. Oh, we can rest. Thank God. Uh, so yeah, um, I will try to jump over those. The Most of the time you'll see me jumping is because of hazards like that. Sometimes you get to climb, but the platform is not really a big thing in the game. All right, so camping. This, uh, eventually, in all, is, is like, in every game, this is a staple of the Elder Scrolls. It becomes known as the rest mechanic at some point. Uh, so you can see it's got camp options. It says camp for a while or until fully healed. Can you notice that the font's kind of weird with the C and the U? There was a lot of moments in the previous video like that as well. That what that's doing is hinting what I can press on the keyboard to not be mouse driven, right? If I press C, it will be as though I clicked the top option, right? Like so. And it will tell me how many hours. Or if I press U, it will do that option instead. Uh, so how many hours do I wish to rest? Well, that's a good question. We don't really know how many we need. So I'm just going to say two hours. Right? And you might think, Jesus, that not that a long time to wait in the dungeon? The time scales are pretty long, honestly. Uh, check it out if I hit enter. I see you have strengthened your arm and your mind. It is time we began this journey. This is the Staff of Chaos, the one item that can open the door between this world and the dimension to which the Emperor has been banished. Tharn used this item to destroy my corporeal form when I tried to warn the Council. He knew that the Staff of Chaos was nigh indestructible, having been made from the essence of the land itself. But in that, he found the key. As the land is split, 
So did he shatter the staff into eight perfectly formed pieces. These he scattered across the realm. I have been able to divine the location of the first piece, a place called Fang Lair. It is said that Fang Lair was originally built by the dwarves of Kragan. Legend has it that a great worm drove the dwarves from their home in the dragon's teeth and took the lair for itself. I only wish I knew the exact location. Perhaps there are sages or scholars who would know of this place. Somewhere in its dank depths lies the first piece of the Staff of Chaos. I wish you well. I do not think Thar knows of your escape, but I can do little else in this form. I have tried to obscure your identity with a spell, but I do not know how well it will hide you. Take care, for Thar may be searching. Go forth with the blessings of the true Emperor and myself. All right, so we have hit bug number one <laughs> in a famously buggy game series that is overly ambitious most releases. So Rhea just spoke to us as though we have escaped. I guess you can maybe rationalize that we have escaped in as much as we are out of our cell and wandering around. So maybe it's okay, but I will tell you guys that uh, that cutscene is meant to play once you're out of the prison. The thing is, if you level up once in here, which you see I did in mere moments, and then rest, you're going to get the cutscene. Bit of a shame. So, anyway, uh, we we have our next quest. We've got to go to some place, Fang Lair. We've learned about the Staff of Chaos. It's been split into multiple pieces, and we want to collect them. That's basically the idea of the main story, so don't worry too much. And, well, we'll deal with that when we're actually out, Rhea, okay? And I'll recap you guys on that as well at that time. Don't worry. So, anyway, for now, I just wanted to point out that what do we get for two hours of resting? Well, a little bit of health and a little bit of fatigue. It's not enough. So, instead, most of the time you're going to see I just camp until fully healed. And you'll see the hours are passing. Nine hours, ten hours, eleven hours to really heal there. Now, I didn't go to 100%. Oh, no, I guess I did. It just looked like I didn't for a second. Okay, good. So, we've been chilling out for a long time. There's no, like, food or water mechanic. Don't worry about that. It's a complicated game with lots of stuff going on. But a lot of those, like, realism mechanics and stuff and bag downs, you're not going to see. Um, so, anyway, 71 gold. We get a bracelet and a left plate pauldron. All right, cool. So, plate. Plate is what we as a ranger are allowed to wear and so few other classes can. Which is really good. We've got a helm and a pauldron in the first dungeon straight away. Super nice. Then there's a bracelet. Now, you'll see that the bracelet, when I equip it, has globally affected all of the numbers. Which start, like, at my feet here, you can see it's plus eight. And now it's gone to minus four. Uh, sorry, plus four. It's going down. I struggled with this. And pretty much everyone I've ever seen play the game has struggled with this. Let me be clear. Armor rating in this game, AR works as uh in like a, a reverse lower is better what this means this plus eight is it means when an enemy attacks me he gets a plus eight bonus like a plus eight to his dice roll right which is huge when i equip the bracelet it globally reduces that so i am now better if an enemy attacks me and it rolls to this shoulder he's now got a minus five chance of doing good damage or whatever, right? So we want to lower the numbers as much as possible. This is resistance against what they do, which is kind of totally unintuitive to look at these days. It's like, what? Equipping armor lowers my numbers, but people like to see numbers go up. But again, that's just like the D&D &D inspiration and foundations for this game, really. that That's what this is all about. Um, so we've equipped the bracelet, which as you can see is blue, again, suggesting to its magical uh, properties. And here you'll see, minus four to AR, AR being um, armor rating, right? And it doesn't even have any weight. So bracelets are pretty cool, uh, and we can drop out. Now we do have two blue items, so let's uh, let's leave this panel and check out this button here. The dagger, the, the, the fist with the dagger, right? You might think this is some kind of backstab option. This is the use option, and I actually really recommend that you just tap U on the keyboard to access this a lot of the time. I'll probably be mouse driven for a lot of it. Uh, when you click this, any items you can use, like magical items, would now appear on a list on the right. Uh, so I'm clicking it. We don't have any, so don't worry about it. I guess we'll deal with that uh, in a little bit shortly later. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's look at getting out of the dungeon now, shall we? 
I think we've explored well enough. We got a level. Really, I want to get a couple more, but we'll probably fight things on the way back. So you'll see we did like this weird horseshoe shape. I'm going to mark this area now on the dungeon as um, depths, okay? And what I'm going to do is try to move back to our cell, which is out on the east. Uh, this was our cell, so... So I'm going to type cell here. Marking and writing in the dungeon is, uh, map is really recommended, alright? If you're just invalidating the game by using the wiki or whatever. So here I'm going to use the compass to find north and we're going to try and backtrack a little bit here. Um, then, you know, you don't really have to do it too much, I suppose. But if you're playing the game properly, and I'm going to try to give you a real arena experience as best I can. Uh, you kind of want to write on it, you know, and it's cool. It's one of those little roleplay things. It's a feature I miss, writing on maps. There's a few contemporary games that do similar stuff, but not many, honestly. And, you know, they're real favourites of mine. So we're now at the top of the horseshoe. So we want to take a right at this next juncture, then an immediate left, and then another right afterwards. So we're going to take a right, an immediate left, kill this guy, grab some loot if we can. I'm starting to feel a lot more confident here. Um... And then we can go through. Now, I do want to say, though, it looked like there was a door behind us. Could be some kind of cool treasure room, since I know that this is in the opposite area of the map. And here, check it out. If you look on the map, you'll see that it reveals a lot of secrets to you. These red blocks mean door, okay? Like the door here by our cell. So, how is it, then, that there's a red block here, but clearly no door? Well, here's the funny thing. Is there a switch we could click or whatever? In Arena, it pretty much just means spam click on the walls. And the door will open. There we go. And you'll, you'll find it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I guess there's a technique of playing the game where you just hug all the walls and keep clicking. Strafing is a fast way to move anyway. So you like just strafe against the walls. And you'll see the doors close very, very quickly as well if you're not looking at them. But yeah, there's lots of hidden doors like that. The waterway could have taken us here. I'll do a lucky little corner jump there. And uh, often they just reveal extra chambers, hidden rooms, fun stuff for you. Like here we got 24 gold pieces. But if we had higher luck there, it, well, I don't mean the stat. I mean if we just had been a little bit more lucky, we might have got something a bit cooler from that, from our efforts there. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, now head on back to the entrance. And I'll show you guys the cleanest way out. Um, so this is where we started, right? Here we go. Yeah, that's our, that's our cell. All right, so here's the best way out. We are going to move west all the way. Killing whatever we can as we go. And if I find loot or anything as we go, then cool, I'll do that. You'll see that there's a slight offset here, but we're just going to keep moving west. There's these barrels. Now, barrels are kind of good points of interest as well, right? If you type, like, barrels, I'm obviously... Here you'll see I'm near where I was in the depths, but there's no route to where I am right now. So, we, we were, like, well out there, okay? Um, so, we're just going to keep going and keep going. Oh, God, have I, have I made a mistake? I think I might have made a mistake already. Hold on. Uh, the goblin has nothing usable. Unless, of course, we are next to one of those hidden doors again. Oh, no, no. Okay, so when we hit the water, we wanted to go south, all right? So you just go west as much as possible. And then if you can't go west anymore, take the first southern route. Which actually happens to be right near this water. At this water, go south. Until you hit a wall, and then go west. So now there's a big bit of water. Again, I think if we were an acrobat, we might have been okay. Alright, so here you see I'm getting my health knocked out. By those goblins that are defending the far side. Which is pretty unlucky for us. Hmm, we need to get up there. But there's two of them. Damn, that's a real challenge. And I don't have any, like, bows or anything that I found. we got to get over there. That's the exit to the dungeon. There are other routes. But that's kind of gross, honestly. Oh, no. How do we do this? All right, I think it's time to save again. Uh, where is Tarlin in the sewers? Okay. And let's just see if we can find a route up. There's no way I can swing at them. Maybe I need to explore, find a bow, and shoot my way through. Maybe we can bait them both to the left. It's so scary how the screen's constantly shaking. Look, he's already, I'm already in range. Do you see him swing at me? Maybe I can get up in the middle. Ready? Go, 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 go. All right, we got up. We got up. We got up. One kill. And that guy's in a freaking... Oh, my God, and a third goblin. They got... Oh, and a fourth goblin! Holy crap. All right, so uh, let's talk about the enemies as well before we leave. 
Goblins and rats are pretty much all you find. However, if you over level in here, you spend too long, you will start to find another type of enemy. Lizard men. Uh, lizard men are a little bit creepy. But again, the uh, rats are actually the worst. Speaking of leveling. Uh, they inflict disease on you. There's like 17 different diseases in this game. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, we'll touch on that again in a second. So, let's see. We can maybe get our health plus two now. I'm really just trying to race that so I get as much value as possible. We're still not there. So, instead of that, let's go up to endurance of 70. And, um, and spend the rest on a bit of strength trying to get our damage plus two, I guess. Don't, it doesn't look like we really get anything because we didn't get any pluses. But we did get stuff. Our health's up to 69 now. You know, we did get bonuses. Don't be distracted thinking that the bonus points are all that matters. So anyway, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, there's there's like 17 diseases. I'm not even sure there's good user interface for all of them. Uh, but you can get red death. You can get brain fever, dementia, witch pox, plague. There's so many. It's unbelievable. And they all basically drain different attributes and do di do different things. Now, what do rats give you? Two different ones. You can either get stomach rot, lovely, or cholera, even more lovely. <laughs> I love the kind of the real worldy ones. Uh, and the thing about both of those is they're both diseases that are like permanent in duration, as far as I remember. And they drain your health. Not joking. They drain your health. So you're basically dead. That's it. You need to escape the dungeon like instantly, like ludicrously fast and find a healer. And it's pretty much just game over. So you just want to be a little bit careful of the rats. I think that that's honestly such a brutal, punishing, gross mechanic for Bethesda to put into a starting dungeon that I'm a little bit scared of right now. So anyway, we cross the water and all we do is we run along here. And oh my god, speaking of rats, you go left. I think something's attacking me from behind. Another rat. And another rat. And you just run down here. Can I rest now? Please let me rest. <laughs> Come on. I'm getting so unlucky with the whole rest thing. This is crazy. Dude, I got no health. The, the game is being really, really punishing. To Look, there's a rat on the alcove with me. Two of them. Uh, it's just trying its best to kill me. It's killing me in safe spots. And I can't find any safe zones. So we go, oh god, I, I'm going north. I, I think I've gone the wrong way. Hold on, what the hell? It's just, cross the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm going correct. I'm go Why did I think I was going north? No, yeah, you just, you go west, south, west, south, west, and, and we'll be there in like two seconds. <sighs> no, please. I don't want to die. Uh, All the way, all the way, all the way. Do we, do we just book it? Yeah, we get we get a wrap. By the way, you could just swing the whole time if you really wanted. All right, ahead you can see the shimmering field of the shift gate. Okay, and voila. Now, if you rest at the shift gate, finally we can. I'm gonna do it until healed. Uh, I think you'll level up if you spend at least a little while here. Basically, fin fi finishing the end of the quest tends to give a good amount of experience. That's a lizard man. Okay, all right. That pretty much means we've probably spent a little bit too long here. I think. Well, not really. Maybe we just got unlucky. Let's try and rest until fully healed. There you'll see I got ambushed while resting. We'll talk more about that later, but that's kind of a main thing in the game. Uh, all right, so there you go. That's uh, that's it. If you want to continue the main quest, you want to be about my level, level three, level four, and we're going to go through the gate. I will note that there was some DRM right here on this gate uh, at the release of the game, the floppy disk version of the game. Uh, will basically, when you hit here, you'll get a random voice in your head, and it will say, Tell me the cost of a spell. And then you have to look in the manual, thus proving you bought the game. Because, you know, the idea of getting a manual on the internet was totally not a thing. <laughs> uh, you know, but they're talking about bootleg copied floppies and stuff, right? That's what they're talking about. And people wouldn't reproduce the manuals. So, you need to find the cost of a certain item or spell or something. Type it in and then you go. If you buy the game on GOG... And I know it's free, so why would you? But you can get it on GOG. They give you a little folder if you're playing the floppy disk version with all the passwords, so to speak. So you can do that. I'm playing the CD-ROM version, which didn't have any DRM. I think it might have, but it's been stripped out, basically. So the DRM is not in this. You don't actually have to answer that arbitrary little question. It's just a little bit of flavor. Some even more weird trivia for you is on that DRM, they ask you about an item called the Staff of Magus, which is actually like a special artifact. We'll deal with those later. 
Um, but if you answer that question, it's impossible to get it correct. It's like bugged. The DRM is bugged on one of the questions. Seriously. Really kind of sad, but there you go. Anyway, we don't have to see that. We just walk into the shift gate. And we're out. Oh, feels good. Oh, I don't want to camp. I'm going to put my hammer away so that people don't get annoyed. And welcome, guys, to our home of Hammerfell. Now, if I right-click the map, you will see that this is our province that we're currently in. It's written in yellow, Hammerfell. That's the map we looked at the beginning. If I left-click the map, you'll see that we're at a place called Sandy March, which uh, I've got a lot to talk about. So thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next part. As we continue as Tarlin the Ranger. If you're enjoying, please feel free to drop some comments. Tell some people about the video. That would mean the world to me. And uh, next time, there's a whole world to explore. We've made it to the outer world. See you there.